What's up people, this is Sora with a new episode of Beginner Tutorials for Unreal Engine 4. If you've been following these videos, you might have noticed that I have changed the title from Absolute Beginner to Beginner. The reason for it is that if you've been following these videos, you are not an absolute beginner anymore. However, if you feel like you are, I recommend you to go back to the previous episodes where we covered some very fundamental aspects of game development on Unreal Engine 4. Watch those first. This episode is special in that in most of the previous episodes, our focus was to learn more about scripting. In this video, we'll focus on game design as a general concept. So even if you're not interested in scripting in Unreal Engine 4, or any other aspects of game development for that matter, than game design, then this video is good for you. We'll be focusing on what good game design is and how it can be achieved. And in the end, we will set up the next project we'll be working with to learn more about game development in Unreal Engine 4 in the coming videos. So let's get into it. In episode 1, we talked briefly about game design. We said that a game is an activity with rules and goals. And we also said that game design is the process of creating the content and the rules of the game. I also mentioned that game design and scripting are different parts of the game development process, but they are not mutually exclusive, meaning that you can be a game designer, but you're not scripting and vice versa. Before we get into the main content, I want to explain this a little further and explain to you what game design is not, since it can be a little confusing. If you look at the game development process, it is composed of different parts. You have the game design part of designing the gameplay, of course, and focusing on digital games, you have scripting, using an engine or a programming language. You have level design. You have game writing. You can have user interface design and etc. It's important to note that even if all these are parts of the game development process, game design itself is only the process of creating rules and the goals of the game, not scripting, not designing the levels, not designing the story or writing the story and the skills needed for each part might not be necessarily the same. You can choose to specialize in one of these areas and that is totally fine as a lot of people do. However, as an indie game developer who does all these stuff or most of them anyways, I find that even if it takes me longer to develop games, however, knowing and being involved in all the aspects of game development has its advantages as well. For, for example, this can be very inspiring for new ideas when you're developing games. If you are, for example, playing around in an engine or scripting something with a programming language, you might come across some very interesting ideas for new game mechanics. Or while developing a story for your game, you might come across some very interesting ideas, some new mechanics that only make sense in the context of that story. Also, even though the game development workflow is composed of different parts, you're still delivering one experience. And when you have an insight in all of these parts, it helps to deliver a better overall experience. So, okay, now going back to the definition of game design, creating the rules and the content. But most games you can think of fit this definition. So what differentiates the games that are good and engaging to play from the bad ones that are not compelling to play, that are boring, basically. 
In order to answer this question, we'll expand on our game design definition. So what is good game design? It is still creating the rules and the goals of the game, but goals that the player feels motivated to reach. Rather than demanding the player does something via the rules, the game itself should inherently motivate the player in the direction that the designer wants the player to go. So think about some of the games that you have played in the past where you were eager to play, the games that are your favorites. I encourage you to pause the video right here and write down the answers to this question. The question is, what motivates, motivated you to play those games? Within five minutes, and then come back. Some answers you might have come up with might be a compelling story, exploration, interesting level design, discovering, maybe competition and winning in like online, online games, playing with your friends, etc. However, there is one key concept that has everything to do with good game design. And that is providing players with meaningful choices while achieving the goals of the game, which can be achieved by setting up the right rules for the game. Not only does this motivate the player to win, it also gives the player the opportunity to get better at the game by playing it over and over again, and mastering the game, and that makes them come back. And this applies not to just computer games, sports even. When you, get, when you start playing a sport and then you continue playing, you get better and better and all of a sudden you just get addicted to it. And it, the same principle applies to digital games. Some example of, examples of meaningful choices in games are, for example, troop replacement in, in an RPG game, point allocation during character development in an RPG game. Or if you think about non-digital games, for example, choosing which piece to move in a chess match. Or for example, choosing which punch to throw in a boxing match. All these are examples of meaningful choices. So, now to the next project, project we'll focus on in the coming episodes. The project will be a first-person shooter. This will be a simple project and my main goal when coming up with this idea was to put together an idea which will require using some, some of the key features in Unreal Engine 4 which I want to teach you guys and girls in the coming episodes. For example, using animation, blueprints, setting them up, a little bit about AI and things like that. As I said in the first video, it's a good habit always to start with a design document to give your project a direction and to make sure you are on the right path towards the goals of your project. Sometimes I hear people say, I start a project, Sora, but then I will never finish it. I'll just do it a little bit, I jump to the next one. This is one of the key points that will help you to have to keep track of what you're doing through having a living uh, design document. I've created a simple example for you here. You can pause the video and read the details. And also you can try to see what type of choices I've included here. But basically, you'll be looking for three keys to get out of the level. And you'll of course f face some challenges and enemies. So. Before I finish this episode, I just have one or two tips for beginner game designers. First of all, game design is an it iterative process. And what I mean by that is that you'll come up with an idea, 
you'll put it through your process whatever that is you compare the results after you get your results from your process your your game development process you compare the results to your goals that you set up in your design document if you have not achieved your goals which you probably will not for the first iteration you take those results you put them through your process again and you repeat this loop through and through and this makes you get closer and closer to your goals what this basically means is that when you first start developing a game most probably it will not be very good but that's fine you have to run your game through many iterations to get it to where you want it to be to your goals and this applies to everyone even the best of the best the best game designers have the same process nobody comes up with the perfect game on the first iteration and this actually if you ask me for one life lesson this will be my life lesson advice whatever to you that a lot of things in life is like this that you will not get it right the first time but the key is to just continue and um, do many iterations to achieve your goals and the last thing I want to mention is that the best way to learn about game design is to create games so do it as much as you can so that's it for this time guys this video was a, a lot uh, a lot more compared to the previous videos a lot more about ideas and game design but I think it's important because this is a very important part of the game development process thanks for watching like the video and subscribe for more videos also leave comments if you have any suggestions regarding these videos or questions for me and see you next time